Prime on time, and it is time for the Rewind on the Pregame Show Network. I'm Tali Carr. You might have stayed up late enough on Saturday night, depending on which time zone you are on. But the University of Colorado comes up short against Oregon State on Saturday night. We'll talk about that a bit and everything in the homecoming week that led up to Saturday's game. And as always, we'll take you behind the rope on the sidelines. Things you did not see on TV, but they were caught by Uncle Neely. All right, look at that. I am out of rhymes. Let's kick it over to the rhyme master right here. He has experienced every year of the 50 years of hip hop, and no one can rhyme like your Uncle Neely. Brother man, no. what's going on? I take seven MCs, put them in a line, add seven more brothers who think they can rhyme. It'll take seven more before I go for mine, and that's 21 MCs, eight up at the same time. <laughs> Rock him. I don't mess with you, man. You are a rap historian. I'll start the rhyme out and it'll end in a different place. It might get con configured into another song. I do not mess with Uncle Neely. Make sure you follow Uncle Neely on social media, man. He drops bars all the time. All right, so Neely, uh, we got a lot to get into. Uh, it was another loss last night for the first time uh, this season. Uh, Colorado is below 500, but all is not lost. There's still three games left uh, in the season. But look, I have burning questions here, Neely. You and I go back to our HBCU roots, our HBCU coverage. Uh, we know what homecoming means at an HBCU. Homecoming at Colorado, you were there this week. Uh, the culture wants to know, man, what was it like? What were some differences? What was the vibe homecoming at Colorado? Well, it ain't like HBCU homecoming, <laughs> I'll tell you that, just to get that out of the way. But I must admit, Tali, in all fairness, much like when I got ingrained into the program with Coach Prime at Jackson State, there's a lot of festivities that when you're part of the football program, you just don't get to participate in. So I saw announcements and flyers of what was going on in Colorado, but did not get to see any of it. I do know the stadium was sold out and they recognized, you know, distinguished alums and had alumni band members, that kind of thing. But hey, let's just stop playing, man. Ain't nothing like an HBCU homecoming now. <laughs> like we know that. We know we know it's gonna be a difference. But functionally for the football team, whether you were at Jackson State or here, you don't know the difference between homecoming because it's it's game week. It's not homecoming week. Did you feel an energy of people coming back, you know, maybe for the first time or, you know, second time? And they're like, hey, this year feels a whole lot different than these last few years, a uh, decade or so. Absolutely. Multiple decades. Uh, you know, one thing that happens here in Colorado is they not only have a homecoming, they have a family and friends weekend, too, that took place for another game. So you kind of have two events where a lot of folks come back to enjoy and reminisce. But. Nothing like coming back and you got Deion Sanders as your head coach. So things were wildly different for the fans and the alums that they've been in past years. All right, let's not bury the lead here. Uh, there was a change. Uh, the world found out about it on Friday, uh, and that was the signal calling uh, and the decisions on what plays would be run uh, were no longer going to be made by Sean Lewis. Uh, so Coach Schumer, uh, he gets that nod uh, late in the week is w when the news became public. Uh, what was that like, Neely, uh, from the inside? And, and I'm sure, you know, you probably knew before the rest of us knew, but just what, what was that vibe like uh, when you have to make a, a decision like that within your program? Well, leading into uh, before the decision was made, you could see that the, the tides of change were coming, that something was going to happen programmatically. But let's rewind because you know the best indicator of future performance is past performance. We remember when Deion Sanders was at Jackson State University and they were three and zero, and he changed offensive coordinators because we weren't scoring enough. Uh, we remember when he made Coach Pollock step down as OC and elevated TC Taylor from receivers to offense coordinator, and they won the rest of the season. And he changed offense coordinators again because we weren't scoring enough. Both of those seasons went undefeated, but for Coach Prime and his standard. You know, if you're not getting the production that he wants, you know, he's going to make changes. So you knew at some point the change was going to come. Having said that, programmatically internally, there was not a big upheaval of change because keep in mind, Pat Shermer was an offensive analyst. Uh, so he's involved and to some degree 
what happens offensively, whether it's a script. They're just not involved in direct coaching. And even when calling the plays, he was calling the plays from the booth. So he's not down there directly talking to uh, a player in that regard. So I think if you're talking to a Shadur Sanders or a Travis Hunter when he's on offense or a Zay Weaver on offense, they would they would tell you that nothing changed as far as what they're hearing, what they're doing, and what they're seeing because Pat Shermer was always involved in the offense. Uh, let's let's peel that layer back a little more, Neely, uh, because you know when you listen listen to the national media or you're just from the outside and you're making your own you know, kind of opinions be known. Uh, You said it. Uh, The people that were subject to those changes, uh, you know, with their job title, description, what they were doing um, at Jackson State, stayed within that program, and not only stayed within that program, uh, for the most part, uh, I mean, T.C. Taylor became the head coach at Jackson State, uh, Mm -hmm. but they stayed with that transition uh, to Colorado. There, There is a thought process of, hey, I'm a part of this team, I got to do whatever it takes. And if that means I'm doing this, then that's what I'm going to do. If you need me to do that, that's what I'm going to do. And there's also this thought process of, oh, my God, I'm demoted. You know, I'm out of here. Can you tell us about uh, the culture and and, and I guess part of the personality requirements that it takes to to be a part of this coach prime unit and be willing to make the shift and and do whatever is, is called upon? For the, for the greater you, of you, the team. You answered the, you answered the question with your question. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes uh, to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing the main thing is the success wins and losses-wise of this program. It's the success production-wise of this program. It's are we getting the most out of our student-athletes with the schemes that we're calling and the plays that we're running. Uh, and so anybody on the end getting noticed can be shifted or realigned to their purpose. Uh, and when you look at what happened at Jackson State with Coach Pollock, you know, he didn't leave the team. And when when Coach Prime came to Colorado, he came with him, you know, as an offensive analyst. So uh, these are not personal, you know, vendettas or not, you know, firings. You know, Sean Lewis just became co-offensive coordinator, and he's still on the sidelines signaling the plays in like he was in the weeks past. There's just a guy in the booth now with a headset that's saying, hey, I think we should run this right now. Let's do that instead of it all being on one person. Uh, so internally, again, Tali, you didn't see a lot of turmoil. You didn't see any turmoil. You didn't see people upset and, you know, kicking over the coffee pot and that kind of thing. It was, let's get ready to play this game. All right, let's hear from Coach Prime now. He talked about the change when he talked to the media after Saturday night's loss against Oregon State. When, when did you decide to maybe consider making the change? Was it after UCLA or was it even before that, that uh, time you were looking into it? I'm not going to disclose all my thoughts, man. I mean, my thoughts are my thoughts. I'm not going to disclose when I make a decision to do something. Just know that I made the decision and I don't stumble or stutter on it. And I'm not looking back. It is what it is. And that's what it's going to be. I make a decision to help this team win. You guys don't know all the intangibles in it. You just from the out looking from the outside of the crib, looking in. I got tenant windows and you can't even see in the house. And But you're making conclusions on what I should and should not do. Okay, Coach Prime is is very transparent. Uh, he often, almost always, keeps it 100 and, and lets you know what's going on. But but he did allude there, Neely, that there are some intangibles and, and people don't know everything. And, uh, you know, he said something to the effect of, you know, I got tinted windows and, and you're trying to look all in my house and, you know, telling me what, what I got on, on, my, on my dinner plate and all that. He didn't say the dinner plate. I, I added that. But just, just so you get <laughs> the move. Uh, it, you know, Neely, it, it's, I don't want to say, I. what do you sense? I don't know if I sense frustration. I don't, I don't want to call it tension, but I don't know, man. Last couple of weeks, I feel a little, little something. It, is it just me? No, he, he certainly is frustrating. Uh, Shador Sanders at quarterback is frustrating. Travis Hunter at wide receiver and cornerback is frustrating. These are frustrating times, man, like, the expectation is to win. You know, you practice and go out there and perform to win. And so when winning doesn't happen, frustration kicks in. To the rest of the world, some would say, hey, man, you know, temper your expectations. One of the 11 program, you got four wins. You know, you've won already a great first season. But that's not Coach Prime's standard. And so anytime he takes a loss, a loss that was avoidable, because look at this, Todd, and I've said it again and again and again. When you look at what this team has done this year, the only team we could not have beaten no matter what was Oregon. 
Oregon whooped us. All the other losses, including this recent loss this past Saturday night, you were in the game and could have won the game. And that's why you see Deion Sanders frustrated is because we're not getting blown out by everybody like Oregon. These games are winnable. We were either leading at some point or could have led, but functional things, little things, detailed things kept that from happening. And that's why he's frustrated. And playing not great and still having a chance. I, I think, you know, it, it's it's one thing if you're like, man, we played perfect and we were almost there. It's like, you know, they stuck it up in the first half, you know, statistically. Uh, and, and we're still right there. And, and if, you know, the last, if you could take back the last 38 seconds of, of their first half, you know, it could be an entirely um, different ball game. Neely, is anyone still holding uh, Coach Sanders to that standard of, hey, man, you won four games. That's a huge improvement from last. I, I don't think anybody has got any more thought about that one and 11 team from last year. You know, and it's because of him. I remember during the Jackson State days before he got here, JSU really didn't talk about the Celebration Bowl a lot. He made the Celebration Bowl matter because he said, not only where we're going, we're going to win, we're going to be 13 and all that kind of talk. And people buy in and believe it and get behind it. And then when it doesn't happen, it feels like some form of dejection, but you have to realize, like, wait a minute, we didn't never win before he got here in the first place. What are we mad at? Like, he actually I got us there. I've never been to it. <laughs> <laughs> like, at all. And so now it's the same thing coming with this 111. You get the charisma of a coach prime. People start to believe before we play a game. We rattle off three wins in a row, and now everybody's believing, except for the haters. The haters couldn't wait for the wheels start to wobble and come off. And when they start to come off, people are saying, oh, I told you so. No way he could turn it around in one year. But the truth is, he has turned it around in one year because when you look at the arrow, it's pointing up. When you look at the production from this team being in these games that a year ago, I think I think a year ago, uh, you know, this game against this same opponent was about a 40-point victory. You know, this time it's 26 to 19. You can't tell me it ain't getting better around here, but better ain't his standard. Winning is his standard. All right, so we, we continue to add this context, and, and we'll go back to, to the Jackson State uh, spring season. You know, at, at various points during this year, Neely, we've said, or at least I've said, you know, this doesn't quite feel like the spring season. It's not quite the first year. Uh, it's somewhere in between, and, and I think – throughout the year, it's gotten closer to feeling like that first year. And at some points it got closer to feeling like that, you know, spring season and, and it goes back and forth. Um, I, I've kind of settled on this, you know, that spring season, man, they did not have the quarterback that, that they wanted. Shador Sanders was, you know, still a high school athlete. You know, he graduated early, but he, he wasn't playing that, that season. Um, I, I think there's similarities and differences between not having your offensive line and not having your quarterback. Those, those are two different positions, but they're so dependent upon each other. Even if you have your quarterback, if you don't have your offensive line, it's like you don't have your quarterback. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just that simple. It does mirror that spring COVID season in Jackson State where he didn't have all his pieces, uh, but performed well. Keep in mind that spring season in Jackson State started off 3-0 and as well, and then we took a couple of losses and had a couple of games canceled. Here's something you got to keep in mind, Tyler Carr. You ready for this? I'm ready. In Deion Sanders coaching history, this is his first time being below 500. Was never below 500 at Jackson State. Never be either of the seasons, COVID or the SWAC undefeated seasons, never below 500 at Trinity. This is the first time that when you look at the ledger, the balance sheet, that there are more losses than there are wins in his coaching career. And and that and this is not the end of the season. So, being under 500 doesn't count if you were there for a little bit. It, it only matters uh, where you finish. All right. So yeah. we got the big boys coming up later this week, and we're going to take the deep dive into the game. But you know, we like to dabble a little bit from from a you know a little drone level, just looking down and talking about that game against Oregon State. Uh, Neely, when you get a when you switch roles uh, from an offensive coordinator. Uh, the fact that it was a rough first half and it finally seemed to, you know, come together in the fourth quarter. Was that surprising to you? Well, we've seen this team be a second half team early in the season uh, with those games that we won. So it was not surprising. Uh, what I think is fortunate for this team is you have now post by week had two back to back games. where going into the first half. The defense almost pitched a shutout. 
and was giving the offense every opportunity to be successful, uh, but just couldn't move the ball uh, beyond getting in full field goal range. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that prompted Coach Prime to make a change and who was calling the plays to try to get more of the offense. Uh, so one of the arrows that is indeed pointing up uh, is the defense. Now you look at that, you know, last 30 seconds, that score that you gave up, which happens, you know, in defense, sometimes you just have a blown assignment and things happen. But overall with that game, man, Charles Kelly's, Kelly's defense here in UCLA and other games, getting takeaways, leading the conference in takeaways is a good indicator. But you can't have a game like at UCLA, four takeaways and you lose. You come home and play a game, get two takeaways and you lose. At some point, you have to take the bull by the horns, the buffalo by the horns, if you will, and take advantage of these turnovers that you're creating on defense and get some points on the board from offense. And that just has not been happening. Having said that, once again, shown we can still do some things, even with an offensive line that's not up to the caliber that we want, because we've won games with that offensive line. And in this particular game, came back in the second quarter and really made a game of it. And that's something that Coach Prime drove home to the team in the locker room post game was how proud he was that they did not give up. You had every reason in the world to give up and just let this game run on out, but you fought and kept fighting and showed that you could have beat this team. You know, late second quarter, Neely. And first of all, let me pat myself on the back. I stayed awake for this one. Oh, oh man, that's that's amazing. <sighs> these 10 o'clock, you're old. these 10, 15, 10, 20 Eastern time kickoffs. Let's not do that. I, I hope this Big 12 schedule is, is more conducive. <laughs> We're moving to the Big 12, Tyler, and I don't think you have to put up that too much longer. <laughs> oh, God, it's hard. You know, I texted you earlier in the day. I said, Neely, I'm probably not going to stay up. And then I texted you again. Neely, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> hey, we feel the same way here. Oh, God. I mean, even if it was an 8 o'clock kick, you know, on the on the East Coast, I'd be like, hmm, I don't know about this one. Uh, but anyway, uh, enough of me. Uh, I didn't hate the play call. I, I don't want to sound like a homer here. Uh, you know you know me. I, my integrity is everything. Uh, this team does not run the ball well. A lot of time for them, a handoff is a screen pass. Uh, I felt like on that first down, uh, we're talking about that drive where there's like 38 seconds left. The uh, Oregon State punts the ball. They get it like, what, at the five-yard line, something like that. Uh, the screen pass was there. It just was not executed. It, it was open in theory. Uh, second down, Jimmy Horn has to catch that. Like, that was, that was right there. And, and, you know, the announcers were like, you know, what did you think you were going to do? Were you going to drive down the field when you hadn't done anything, you know, for the whole first half? My thought process was like, hey, let's get a couple of catches going into halftime to remind ourselves that we can throw and catch the ball and move it down the field. And, and even though, you know, they're probably not going to score in those 38 seconds, at least you can build some sort of momentum and, and go into the halftime on a positive note. Um, it was just a... a perfect storm worst case scenario that, that you get those two drops and then you leave time on the clock and you know then you have a blown assignment in, in the secondary uh i don't know neely is am i being a homer I, I didn't think it was like oh my god these are the worst play calls i've seen no i don't i don't think you're being homer i think you're being logical what who, what person other than a loser wakes up in the morning and plans to fail you know you, you don't go into these situations going you know what here's what we're going to do y'all we're going to go down here and f this up and leave them time on the clock. No, you're calling plays based on them succeeding, not them failing. And what momentum would it have been to get a score before the second quarter ended? Because guess who gets the ball the third quarter? So I'm never mad at aggression, uh, being aggressive offensively or defensively with blitzes when it creates an advantage for the next time of possession as well, which would have been the third quarter. It just didn't work out that way, those drop passes which, you know, you're talking about a Dylan Edwards. Look what he did to TCU. You're talking about a Jimmy Horn. Look what he did at UCLA. You're talking about guys who are dependable that just had, you know, bad execution and left time on the clock. But no one is sitting there scripting for failure. So I applauded the effort to try to get that score. All right. So we're going to take a much deeper dive into the X's and O's and Jimmy's and Joe's of the game against Oregon State. We're going to do that with the big boys when Coach Carl Reed joins us. Uh, a little later this week. Uh, but Neely, you're, you're always talking to, to people. Uh, you, you get, you score the big interviews on the sidelines. And for the second time this season, um, you caught Master P. Let's, let's take a listen to a little bit of this interview with Master P. And then we're going to come back and talk about what really transpired there and the news we found out. 
I came back this time to celebrate. Let me show you something. He wasn't on the Wheaties box. Me and Snoop put Coach Prime on the cereal box. This prime time, you know what I'm saying? Honey O' Snacks, prime time Honey O' Snacks. Never been seen before. They didn't put him on the Wheaties box, but me and Snoop put him on the Snoop cereal box. So we changing the game the same way he doing. Absolutely. You know, we had some bumps in the road, but your support yeah. hadn't wavered. Yeah, nah, man, because adversity is what's going to make you better. And so the adversity is going to take this team and Coach Prime to the next level. It don't happen overnight all the time. So, but it's going to happen big time. Man, you and Snoop are doing it. You got Prime on the box. Yeah. Two more wins. We got a bowl game. That's what I'm saying. We almost there. All right, come on. Come on, Neely. Neely. Time Magazine. Serial covers. I mean, this is winning. Look, it, it might yeah. be below 500 on the scoreboard, but... This is winning in life, man. <laughs> oh, it's, it is 100% winning in life. Uh, when you talk about what Master P and Snoop Dogg have done with their food and their cereal company, uh, and now we have Coach Prime on the cover of that box. Uh, you know, Coach Prime was, wasn't on Wheaties, but he's on the Snoop box, and you can get your, your prime time honey O's. It's just a phenomenal thing. Look, look at the recruiting that that's going to do. What head coach in America is on a box of cereal, man? You know, none. What head coach in America has a gold jacket? And to have guys like Master P who come here when it's up or when it's down and support Deion Sanders just shows you the gravitational pull that's taking place in Boulder, Colorado, but now it's going to be taking place on every grocery store aisle in America. When you push that card up and down, you're going to see prime time. <laughs> can, we, can we give our flowers to, to Master P? No, no matter how you feel about him or his music or, or whatever. Uh, here's a guy that does not wait, has never waited for someone to do something for him. Uh, he does not wait to, you know, for established brands to co-sign his dream. He just goes out and, and does it, man. And and I, I have to applaud that. And I think that's why he and Coach Prime get along so well, is that they are cut from that same maverick cloth of not getting permission and really don't even try to get forgiveness after that either. They're going to do their thing the way they see fit to do it and not ask for permission to buy in uh, when it's their vision and their dream. They are uh, a catalyst for change. They are disruptors, you know, to the status quo and they are wildly successful for it. Are and you? now they're doing a serial together. You're watching the rewind here on the pregame show network. Neely, is there ever a bad time to eat cereal? There's never a bad time to eat cereal. Let me tell you what I do here in Colorado. Here's a fun fact for you in the athletic cafeteria. Sometimes I bypass the dessert selection, but go make a quick little cup of cereal and get a sugar fix that way. It is never a bad time for breakfast, and there's never a bad time for cereal as a snack. Now I just, just got to get me some Snoop cereal, those Coach Prime, Primetime Honey O's, then I'm going to be on it. Right. This cereal isn't infused with anything, is it? There's, there's no infusion. You know what? It might be because it's addictive. <laughs> My, my son's a big cereal fan, but I, I, I'm not quite ready for that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Neely, I want to go back I'll, here on the rewind. I want to go back and I want you to explain that you posted a, a motivational speech uh, from one of the coach. Wh which coach was that that delivered that speech? Uh, coach Cheney, he is over uh, player development, helps guys with off the field issues or things they may dealing, be dealing with in their personal life. All right, let's listen to a little bit from Coach Cheney here. Take your helmet off. He's okay. Take your helmet off. Yes, Take your helmet off. I want to I see your eyes. I want to see your eyeballs. I want to look at you. Hey, look, man, listen. It's a lot of baby shit going on around here. It's a lot of people around here ain't living right. On and off the field. Ain't nobody out the practice doing like this. We just getting through this shit, JB. We missing meetings. We late to meetings. And we we back to go out there on the field and we in there week. Coach Brown can't get no more speeches. Come out of high school, you all this, you all that. You was entitled. Fuck that, if you don't do what I'm saying, I'm leaving. Your whole ass. Time to hit somebody in the mouth. Oregon do not have no fear, y'all. None. Ain't one player on Oregon team feel like they're going to lose this game. 
It's time. Stop pussyfooting around. Everything you do got to matter. Man, I don't want that. I don't want him. Quit pussyfooting, man. Stand up for each other. Love one another. Pray for each other. Your mom and daddy, your family, your homeboys looking at this shit. And I'm sure they don't like what they see. You understand what I'm saying, Juju? We from the hood, we understand. This shit ain't right. Make this shit right. We are a powerhouse, but we don't know it because we listen to the talk, we listen to what people say. What would they give to be in the practice today? What would they give? Huh? They'll give anything to play one play to have Jay. One play. And y'all take this shit for granted. I love each and every one of y'all. Ben, I ain't gonna see you fail, bro. I'm not gonna let you go hard and nobody else go hard. You understand me? Yes, sir. Everybody up. Win on me. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Win. All right, Neely. I mean, he put it out there, man. Like, he literally put it out there that, hey, you guys, you know, I know you think you got it going on. This is, you know, the epicenter of everything that's happening, but we still got to do better. Like, and I, I my favorite part, and, and I know you had to kind of cut around. You, can, you can't put the whole thing in there, but he was like, man, there are people. And I imagine he was talking about people who have lost an opportunity or, you know, maybe their career is over like what they would do to trade places with these kids right now. And, and that's something that every human being, myself, yourself included, can easily lose focus of, like the opportunity that we have and that we're living right now in the moment. And he wanted to remind them of just that. These are very comfortable surroundings. You know, uh, three meals a day, buffet style, a uh, housing supplement if you're off campus, uh, NIL deals, uh, the, the collective that's formed to help athletes and nonprofits grow together. Very comfortable, beyond comfortable, plush environment to play football in. And, you know, you have someone giving you everything, but you're not giving them everything in return or not even giving them half what you can give. And, you know, one of the things I had to do, and I, co I told Coach Chain, I said, brother, you tested my editing skills because some of those parts that we cut out with some colorful language and getting their attention. Uh, but one thing we say here is that, you know, where is with Coach Prime's permission, we show a lot. We don't show everything because if you want to see everything, then you need to fill out an application for the school and come try out for football. And then you will get to see everything. Uh, but Coach Cheney got their attention and talked about not taking this stuff for granted, uh, not going around here being entitled, you know, start to become a professional in what you do. Be in meetings on time. Give effort. Don't leave any meat on the bone. Uh, because here's the reality, Tali, that we in with college football in this modern day era, particularly with the transfer portal. Rosters are going to change every year. There's no such thing as a four year scholarship. You know, you got you got this year to be here and, and who knows what's coming next. Uh, and so you're going to have attrition and the guys that remain with programs across the country, those guys who give their all and give a return on investment. You know, you have the coaches pouring into you, the schools pouring into you. And what are they getting back? If they're getting back just a half ass effort, you're not going to be around that program much longer. And and I think, you know, the, the, the way we judge people, especially in sports, no matter if it's Colorado, you know, the Lakers, the Cowboys, wh whatever, whatever, you know, these teams that, that get the, the utmost scrutiny uh, from the general public, we treat it like it's a video game. Like, like they're just this skill <laughs> and there's somebody behind the scenes, you know, pushing all the buttons and they just go out there and perform. Uh, not, not that it surprised me, but I was like, hmm, you know, with all this going on, you know, Coach Prime and the rest of his coaching staff still has to find a way to remind players, to motivate players, hey, I need you at the meeting. I need you there on time. It's easy to assume that, you know, behind the scenes, there's just perfection and, and everybody's, you know, just doing what they're supposed to do. But nowhere in life does that happen. You know, whether oh. you're 15 or 50. <laughs> yeah. Because we all have problems. We all have issues outside of what we're currently doing. And those things impact what the main thing is. You know, as you and I sit on this show, uh, you know, we got kids that look for us for needs. Uh, we got we have business partners. We got associates. And so you're responsible for other things. But it takes someone around you to be the guard, the guardrails, the guide rails on your highway of life and say, hey, man, 
you know, let's let's lock back in. Let's focus because this is the thing that takes care of all those other things. So don't get distracted. And it's easy to get distracted with with Twitter, uh, formerly known as Twitter's X now, and social media and NIL and all of your games on TV and the stadiums are sold out and social media platforms internal and external are blowing up. It's easy to sit, to forget. Now, why am I really here? What am I supposed to be doing? But that's when the coach Cheney steps in and says, hey, let, let's have some real talk, fellas. Yeah, and, and another thing that you have to remember, you know, I've given these type of talks. I've received them. You know, they last for a little while, for a little yeah. while. <laughs> but your problems and your situation and whatever it is that makes you you uh, is going to pop right back up, uh, you know. And, you know, Dolly, you may have a, a new hymn, a new song at church. But what you ain't got is a new Bible. It's 52 <laughs> Sundays in a year, and that same Bible with the same verses, you got to go back and get them reminders so you can stay on the right course. Exactly. That That is a great way of putting it from the man who drops his children off at Children's Church and then leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the man who wish he would have thought of it first. The man who almost tried it was almost brave <laughs> enough. Uh, almost. Not quite. Not quite there yet. Uh, all right, man. We got three to go. Three to go. That's right. Uh, one more. One more at home. Arizona comes here. You know, we took care of Arizona State on the road. Arizona comes here. Home game. Thankfully, Tali, it is not an 8 p.m. kickoff. We finally got a, you know, what's a, around the nation, a noon afternoon kickoff time. Uh, and then we go on the road. We go on the road to Pullman, Washington, Washington State on a Friday night, a Friday the 13th of November. Then on the road, Thanksgiving weekend to Utah. So these next three games only have three games left, and there's some tough ones, particularly those last two on the road. So you got to take care of Arizona. Like you just, you can't let that one get away. Uh, you got to take care, and we're we're talking about bowl eligibility here, obviously. Sure. Uh, sure. You got to get that one, and then you got to beat somebody that people don't think you're going to beat it, at least one time. You know, I've always said that the road to a championship, the road to a winning season takes a couple of things. You have to beat everybody you're supposed to beat, and you have to beat somebody that you ain't supposed to beat. Now, we weren't supposed to beat TCU the first weekend, and we did. So we kind of checked that mark. But where we went off the road is we've had some losses against people that on paper you should have beat. Uh, you know, the Colorado State game was a win, but it was much tougher than it should have been on paper, and then you lose the Stanford game. Stanford was a must-win as it related to bowl eligibility because it was going to help with your math. Uh, but when you drop Stanford, drop UCLA, then you come home, if Stanford was a must-win, anything after it now becomes a must-must-win to a must-must-must-win, and now you're in must-must-must-must-must-win ter territory. Yeah, it is. It has got that overtime feeling right now where it's like you got three downs and, and you got to make it happen. <laughs> There's no maybe we'll fix it later adjustments like it has to happen uh, right now. And, and that's what makes the sport so exciting and so nerve wracking at the same time. But folks, uh, remember, I I'm from North Carolina. Uh, Dean Smith, his first year, they were ready to run him off. Uh, Coach K at Duke. That first year, they were ready to run him off. Uh, it is very hard at this level of competition just to come in and first year, you know, win a championship, uh, dominate your conference. Uh, these things take time, and you, you got to learn some lessons and take some lumps along the way. Uh, but I know we are in a, a right now microwave society, and people don't want to hear all that. They, they want what they want when they want it, which is right now and, and yesterday at the earliest. So. Uh, you you let you left a third leg off that stool, Tolly. Who was that? You left a third like it was right there for you. Being from North Carolina, you talked about Dean Smith and his first effort. You talked about Coach K and his first effort. All you had to add in there was, and I remember PD Pablo's first mixtape. <laughs> Actually, I but what did they, but what did Dean Smith going to do? What did Coach K going to do? And what did PD Pablo go ahead and do with switch it right here like a helicopter, North Carolina? Come on, you turn take your turn Yes, sir. He did. Yes, he did. PD Pablo. You know, before we go, Neely, you have, uh, you know, this Cartier sunglass collection. Uh, I got these from the gas station. <laughs> uh, 
I swear I, I look I look like Joe Biden does when he puts on his sunglasses. I I, I don't think I'm quite ready for you, man. You just got a little more sparkle. I, I I'm kind of Secret <laughs> Service right there. But I, I I appreciate you starting somewhere. You know, just like you said with Dave Smith and Coach K, and now Tali's sunglass game has officially started. Going to be a rough year, but look at where he's going to go. Arrow is pointing up. Sooner he's going to leave the gas stations behind and get some real lenses. Man, just come. I, I think I got to put these QT specials in the transfer portal. I'm, I'm going to step it up, though, baby. I'm going to step it up. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe in Tully Carr. We coming. These sunglasses are coming. All right. He's Uncle Neely. Thank you so much for checking out the Rewind right here on the Pregame Show Network. We got much more content coming on the network this week. Make sure you stick around. Hit those, you know, notifications, the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Check out the website, thepregameshow.com. And shout out to everybody who put us over the 100K on the subscribers on YouTube. 250 is next. Next goal, 250, we'll, we'll be it up.